if you want, we can also post a couple of links to Leaky Gut so you can understand it a little bit more. So because this is pretty much all over the planet and a lot of people are suffering from it. So, so that's one thing I would say that you check in first to see you don't have it. Uh, because if you have developed it, some sort of leaky gut, no matter what you do, because you're not trying to heal, heal the actual cause, you are going to be doing a lot of different things and they're not going to be working. So it's good to, to number one, find out you don't have this and then move on from there. Another thing you can do is, uh, let me see, let me check her messages. What else? They also say I may have polycyst ovaries. I know a lot of leaky gut. They say this is part of the, uh, you hit that home for me. Okay. Yeah, I would definitely look into that, sweetheart. Because, you know, I've had young kids, they brought 15, 16, 18 year old kids to me, and they were uh, suffering from panic attacks. And uh, they take them to ordinary doctors and they give them medications for their, uh, their panics. But when we did the leaky gut test on them, we realized that they have already developed some kind of gluten sensitivity. And uh, so then when we changed their diet, uh, the panic attack started to disappear. So uh, let's see from, uh, okay here from Farhang, how can you cut your negative strands or cords to other people or places? Okay. So that basically goes back into um, from Denmark. So that basically, how can you cut your negative strands or cords to other people or places? So that goes back to a karmic uh, situation, what the subject that we talked about to cut ourselves off from certain uh, negative uh, connection we have to some people and also to places. Again, when we go back, when we start to being touched, by the presence, when the aware awareness comes and we begin to dive into the awareness, we go into the heart of the awareness. And the more we become familiar with it, the more we become uh, immersed into the space that has been created by the grace, by the awareness, the presence. Let, let's put it in this way. I start taking time. I'll just want to make it very simple for you. Let's put it that way. That you disengage from your ordinary life or whatever you're, whatever you're doing, and you're spending time with yourself for how long, whatever that is. So you're gonna go for a walk by the ocean or you go to the park and you don't have your phone on you, you're not engaged with your phone. And you go somewhere and you're walking or you're sitting and you're just hanging out with yourself, spending time with yourself. So let's, let's look at that. I am going to spend time with myself. I have my day and it's very busy and I have a lot of stuff to do. I've got a lot of people to call, send text messages, emails, corresponding with this and that, 
posting things on Facebook or Instagram, um, socializing, seeing my family, exercising, going out, doing that, doing whatever it is. So I pause, I pause and I stop. And this stopping, I spend whatever, 10 minutes, half an hour, whatever, minutes by myself. And I'm hanging out with me. Here I am, spending time with me. And then there may this thought pattern comes, the stuff come like, I need to do something, I need to do something, or I need to go somewhere. So this anxiety may come, this anxiousness may come, that I have to get up and do something. I can't just sit here and not do anything. And you don't respond to that impulse. You just stay. Stay here. And you allow the anxiousness to be. And you look at it. And as you're spending time here, and you're present, you're here, you're not doing anything, then all of a sudden you begin to look around and you begin to look at things that you normally don't look at. I mean, you're in your room, your living room or wherever, and then you start pay attention to where you stacked up your books, where you put your stuff around. Just take a look at them. How often do you look at your things? Not generally, you're looking at them every day, but you don't pay attention to them. And now you just kind of look at stuff, things around you in your room, where you have them. Or if you're in a park or somewhere and you're just taking things, look at a tree, just check out the shape of it and compare that one with another tree and the way that one looks. And you start to see all of a sudden things that you don't see. And in this hanging out, in this moment, by yourself, of being here, and disconnecting from all your instruments and your agendas and where you have to go, a phone call you have to make, you're just hanging out here. You're just here. And then you begin to feel there's something else besides your agendas, something else begin to show itself. And it's that's presence. The present begins to show itself. Something takes over. If you're capable of mellowing down and going beyond the anxiousness, If you don't, you don't give into the mind that is telling you, you got to go, you got to go, you got to do this, you got to do that. If you don't give into that and you just stay still, stay here, you begin to feel the presence. <laughs>